المسلمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا أبو القاهر مصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وأجل فرجهم We first and foremost thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the tawfiq, the blessing to hold this very special webinar and we also extend our warm welcome to our dear viewers, our brothers, our sisters, our elders, our youth to this webinar, this weekly webinar on behalf of the Islamic Centre of England where we discuss some important contemporary and social issues. Today we have the topic of the possibility of the long life of Imam Zamana, Imam al-Mahdi, Ajit al-Farajim Sharif and we are joined by a very special guest all the way from Qum, our very respected Dr. Yahya Jahangiri Sohrawardi. Just a bit of a background for our very respected Sheikh. He has a PhD in Islamic studies as well as Shiite studies. And he's also a lecturer at the Hawza Ilmiya of Qum. And he is also a visiting professor of Islamic studies at, across many universities and countries. He's also a very distinguished Islamic researcher and author and so without any further delay, I would like to welcome our respected Sheikh with a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil barajum. Respected Doctor, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum dear brother. Assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kulli waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hassan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abayih fi hazihi al-sa'ati wa fi kulli sa'ah. Waliyan wa hafidha wa qaida wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka tawa wa tumatahu fiha tawila amina rabba al-alamin Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad wa ajjil barajahum Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters and Thank to Islamic Center of the London for the opportunity. Uh, today, I would like to talk about the possibility of the long life of the Imam Al Mahdi. Uh, and actually, uh, I would like to discuss about this important topic not only from Shiite perspective uh, and nor from the Hadith's perspective. As you know, we uh, many Shiite scholars, as well as some Sunni scholars, they discussed and provided some proofs uh, regarding to the possibility of the long life of the Imam al-Mahdi al-Jalal al-Sharif. Many uh, they talked from the uh, actually um, Hadith perspective, some from the theological perspective, but mostly. Uh, they tried to elaborate the possibility of the long life of the last Imam of the uh, Ahlul Bayt, actually the, tw uh, the twelfth Imam of the Shia, from the Hadith perspective. Now, I would like to watch to this important topic from the Quranic perspective, which all Muslims they accepted, and all Muslims rely on the authenticity of this book. Uh, I would like to highlight uh, the importance of my approach to this topic, not only the topic, the approach of my approach to this topic, uh, which uh, uh, when we look to the Quran and when we apply the verses of the Quran on the life of the Imam al-Mahdi, we see that uh, this approach is useful for all humanity. So, this is uh, actually not only this approach is solving a problem, answering a, a question about the possibility of the long life of the Imam al-Mahdi but also it provides and exposes very scientific teaching of the Quran. So we see that how the possibility of the long life of the Imam al-Mahdi not only it is impossible, but also it exposes and unways a truth, a scientific truth to the humanity, which every human being should learn uh, about these teachings. So this approach is very unique because we, uh, first, we do not uh, talk from sheet perspective. We are not talking from Hadith perspective to say that whether it is authentic or not, 
which group are accepting, some are rejecting. We are talking from Quranic perspective, which is the common accepted among the all Muslims, but also prepare on the result of this discussion today, where not only we find the, the, the answer of our questions regarding the possibility of the long life of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, but also we find that how his life is elaborating the truth and reality of the life to the all humanity and the human being and scientists should come and discuss about it. Not only questions will come to their mind, but also many answers and solutions will be, uh, would be unveiled to them. That's why the, the, the discussion is very important and I would like to talk from this perspective. So I would like to add another um, uh, actually introduction to the uh, topic. When we talk about the possibility of the long life of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, dear brothers and sisters, this question is emerged in contemporary world. By contemporary world, I mean uh, by the uh, fourth, fifth uh, century of the lunar hijrah. But when we go to the early Islamic era, particularly uh, one century after the birth of the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, it is very amazing that at that time we can't find any question regarding the, the possibility of the long life of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, not only in the Shia, but also in the Sunnis. We, we can't find neither in Shia nor in Sunni sources talking about how it comes a person to live in long life. Actually, for example, in the book of the al ghiba by the Nomani, the greatest scholar who collected the uh, hadiths regarding the, the Ghaiba, the occultation of the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, we, we see when he comes to talk about Imam al-Mahdi, the questions um, related to Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, he discuss about the how he is born. And that time, the question was the possibility of the born of Imam al-Mahdi, poss possibility of the birth of Imam al-Mahdi, and also possibility of the Imam of Imam al-Mahdi, because he was five years old. So you see, some of the questions regarding to the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, they are not religious questions. They are arose by the atmosphere we are living in. So on that atmosphere, which was close to the uh, uh, time of the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, it was only 100 years after the birth of the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, never such questions came to their mind that how it come a person to live long life. But today, after passing of centuries, these questions came, come, come to our minds. So it shows that, first of all, possibility of the long life of the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. Any question regarding to the, this issue, these are not a religious questions. They, uh, these questions are not religious questions, but uh, let's call it it is related to the atmosphere and the situations, the time, the location we are living in. That's why, please stick in your mind that questions regarding to the life of the Imam al-Mahdi salam it is not rooted in religious belief on the Iman of any of the, any person. That is rooted in the time and the atmosphere we live in. That's why today no one is asking how Imam Mahdi was born. But on that time, the question was, how is born? No one was asking that how it come, how it is possible he is, he has a long life. So based on these two introductions, I would like to go to the details of our discussion. The possibility of the long life of the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam from Quranic perspective. Uh, again, I would like to, to, to make the question more, more deep to 
find that how his life is enlightening the uh, truth, enlightening the heart of the humanity, but also how his life is unveiling scientific teaching to the humanity. Uh, we have, you know, uh, in our hadiths, uh, two uh, infallible Imam of the Shia, they are mm, called, they have the title of Aba Abdullah. The first Aba Abdullah is uh, Al-Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and the second Aba Abdullah is Imam As-Sadiq alayhi salam. So, um, interesting, uh, uh, one, we have the hadith. One is narrated from the first Abba Abdullah. The second is narrated from the second Abba Abdullah regarding to the life of the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. Or the, uh, the first Abba Abdullah, I mean the Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, he was asked how it is possible, uh, how Imam will appear. You know that at, at that time, Imam al-Mahdi was not born. But still, his appearance was the question in their mind, not the life of Imam, his appearance, you see. They asked how he will appear on the time of the Zuhur and the arrival. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam replied that Imam al Mahdi will appear shaban as a young person in a youth form, mubaffaka. I'm very handsome, not in an old, uh, let's say, old shape. We have the same text narrated from the second Abba Abdullah al-Imam al-Sadr alayhi salam. But Imam al-Sadr alayhi salam added one phrase which makes the question more deep. Imam al-Sadr alayhi salam replied that some people will deny Imam al-Mahdi won't accept his imam and his arrival, saying that why you arrived and appeared in young form? You have to be old. Of the past and the centuries, you have to come in an old age, not in a young age. So it shows that the possibility of the long life of the Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam, not only is a question of today, but also it would be the question of those of people who, at the time of the arrival of Imam al Zaman alayhi salam. And if we do not solve this question, may we reject his uh, arrival, may we reject uh, his Imam due to this pre assumptions we have in our mind. So, understanding, believing to the possibility of the long life of the Imam al Mahdi salam provides the ground of the faith and Imam to accept. That's why I would like to discuss. This is the why today we are discussing about the importance of the uh, solving the problem of the possibility of the long life of the Imam al Mahdi salam. Um, let's go to the Quran. Al in the Holy uh, Quran Al Karim, there is two stories I would like to refer to uh, to these two stories to find the answer. One is the story of the people of the cave, Al Ashab Al Kahf. The people of the cave, when uh, they went to the cave. They entered to the cave once they uh, woke up. So they asked among each other how long we made a lap. Sorry, I would like to use the very term of the Quran because some people uh, and some translators, some interpreters tried, uh, interpreted the, this. Uh, term of the Quran as a sleeping. So they guess that the people of the cave, they sleep for that long period. But Quran never used the term now. Now means the sleeping. Quran never used that. They were, they were asleep. And never Quran says that they were um, they had a, a special Quran says that they had the lab. 
Laps, we can translate it, they were in the pause area, pausing area. When you pause your uh, recording, uh, that is a pause area. That's where Quran used, uh, actually it has from sem a semantic perspective, it has a very deep meaning. I don't like to go to the depth of the, uh, this uh, term in Quran, but I would like to say that some of the terms of the Quran, they should be transliterated actually. Uh, there is no possibility to translate them. One of them is the laugh. Quran never says that, how long you sleep? Quran says that we ask them, how long you made the lab? How long you made posing? So when they woke up, let me refer to Quran. Uh, Quran asked them, uh, yes, the people of the cave. Uh, we find the verses stating that upon awakening from their sleep, Sorry, I have to use the, the word sleep, but actually they were not asleep. The companions were asked how long they had been sleeping or posing for. Their answer circulated around idea of the half, half of a day or full day. Brothers and sisters, please stick in your mind the second term. Because I would like to talk about this issue from based on two stories of the Quran. One is the people of the cave. The same text, Yawman al a day or half of the day, they replied. And some said that impossible to sleep one day. That is too much. So some replied that it is half of the day. And some still couldn't accept that. We sleep half of a day. Half of day is too much. So here, some of the companions said that, okay, go out. Quran says that we, you know, I said to them, you slept 300 years. Look, still you are discussing whether it is half of a day or a day. You can't accept more than a day. The Lord is saying that it is 300 years, not 300 days, not 300 months, 300 day years. They are discussing. They can't tolerate. They can't accept even one day of sleep. How it comes to accept 300 years? But Quran says that. That is the truth. So one of them, uh, he got the uh, Coin and uh, went out to find the food. When he went out, he found that the city is destroyed. Everything has changed. Well, and you know the story. I don't like to uh, go to the details. Even he, uh, when uh, the man gave the coin to buy something, the man said that, how you got this coin? It dates back to many, a uh, yeah, hundred years ago. How you got this coin? And this poor man was surprised that it is only two hours ago. Why the world has changed so? And there is the rest of the story. Uh, I don't like to, do, uh, to go to the details of the story. For example, he went to find uh, his granddaughter uh, house. Uh, when he knocked the door and asked, is my granddaughter there? A lady came that. Are you asking about my grandmother? It was his granddaughter. He said that how it come, uh, I left my granddaughter here and you are calling her your grandmom? The world has changed. He came to the cave and said that, dear friends, dear companions, do not doubt about the time of your uh, time of uh, your posing, your lap. Actually, it was very longer than even what Allah said. You see, they were discussing, sir, we are in doubt of being one day or half. But you say the word changed. Look, dear brothers and sisters, in the first story, I would like to make a conclusion, then I, I will go to the second story of the Quran.
Still, I'm talking from Quranic perspective, not the Hadith perspective. You see, um, uh, Quran says that the chain in one location, in one place, in one period of the time, the changes for a certain people, not only the people, but also in certain uh, certain occasion, certain atmosphere, certain place didn't change in a way that it did change for them only it was almost half of a day but at the same time in the very close place to them very surrounding place of them it was changed for 300 years how it come Quran says that because the people of the cave, they were in lapse of the time. They were imposing of the time. They were not asleep. They were aware of everything. That's why they were asking each other. Quran never says that they were asleep. They were unaware of what is going on. They were alive. They were living. How is it possible to sleep for 300 years? It is impossible. They were aware of the changes of everything. But the changes for in surrounding, it was very fast, but for them it was paused. So it is possible in the very same time, in very same place, the changes for someone in the circumstances area would be very rapid. In a way that they guess that everything is changing. Many people are dying, burning, dying, burning. But for one person, would be nothing. For him, a century of years, you know, for, for him, 10 years of the centuries is only one day. But for the surrounding, that is too much. Let's go to the second story. Subhanallah. Quran repeated this is to, uh, this uh, type of the verse in two stories of the Quran. Maybe Quran says that that is not enough for some people to accept Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam. Let's go to the second story. A second story, both stories, subhanallah, they are not uh, accurate, they didn't occur after our Prophet. They occurred before the Prophet. Maybe Quran want to say that this is the nay, this is the rule of the nature. This is not a religious issue. This is the rule, rule of the nature before the emergence of Islam till the end of the Islam, which is the arrival of the Imam al Mahdi. So the second story is the story of the Prophet Uzair. Alayhi salam. The Prophet uh, I, uh, I have the verses of the Quran. I'm afraid of the time uh, to refer to the, some verses of the Quran. When he, uh, Quran says in his story as well, the Holy Quran also mentions the account of the Prophet Uzair. When he questioned Allah on the process of the resurrection, Allah asked him what he was holding in his right and his left hand. He had something in his right hand and his left hand. Then Quran uh, says that Allah said, how long you have been posed, you have been remained. Still Quran used the word labd, subhanAllah. Then he said that, I have posed, I have been posed, I have been remained a day, yeoman. The same text, the same phrase. Then he said that one day is too much. Never. It was half of a day, a portion of a day. Then Quran said, rather, you have remained, you have posed. A hundred years. 
Prophet Uzair. Look, Quran is not talking about the ordinary people. Quran is talking about the Prophet of Allah, Uzair. Still, he was unaware of the rule of the nature. Quran is unveiling the rule of the nature. And today, many physicians, they have to unveil and understand this rule of the nature taught in Quran. So, Quran said, uh, Quran said that 100 years, he said that, oh my God, oh my Lord, Ya Rabbi, I'm in doubt of a day or half of a day, but you are talking about 100 days, no, 100 months, no, 100 years? Quran said, yes. He said, oh my Lord, I believe you. I'm your prophet. But please explain to me. Then Allah explained. Yes. So he said that rather you remain a hundred years. Now look at your food and drink. He brought his food in right hand. Look at your food. You know, after passing a hundred years, how would uh, how a food, fresh food, would be remain? It is. It, you can't tolerate it. Still, it is uh, boiling. But Quran says that. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yes, Quran says that which it have not been rotten. Still, it was refreshed. It, the, it was boiling. Subhanallah. When he looked at his right and his food and drink, he said, that, Subhanallah, I got more doubt in your saying. Because according to this food, I, I pose, I've been remained only a second. Then Allah said, look to your right. When he, then Allah said, look at your ass, which it was in his left. He saw that even some portion of its bone has been remained. Nothing remained of the donkey. Look, donkey was alive and the, the, the fresh food was boiling. He went to the posing. He went to the lab. He remained in lab, in lab and posing period. When he woke up, according to him, it was only a day or half of a day. But Allah said that it is 100 years. He said that Allah, explain to me. Maybe here Allah wanted to teach to the humanity how the time is relevant. How the changes to the nature is relevant. Why do we think that every change to me should be as same as to you? Why do we have to think that we passed hundreds of our uh, um, actually grandfathers and fathers? Why it is not happening to Imam al Mahdi? Quran says that time is relevant, the very same place. In the very same time, in the very same period, you see the changes for Ozair, it was only a day or half of a day. Because according to his psychology, according to changes in his body, he guessed that it was only a day or half of a day. But when he looked at his foot in his right hand, he guessed that it is less than but when he looked at his ass, he said, subhanAllah, it is thousands of years, not a hundred years. So you see, in one place, in one atmosphere, how the changes would be different. Quran says two stories to the humanity. And I, I, would, I don't like to details of this story because they wrote a paper about this. Quran says that there is rule in the nature. Don't evaluate the nature and the creature of the Allah, the Almighty, based on your pre-assumptions. The rules which is in your mind, they are very weak. 
please understand creature based on the rules which is hidden in the Quran. But it, uh, if you understand that, you would see that how the world is full of different rules which is in your mind, different than those of rules which is in, in your mind. So we saw that in two stories of the Quran, how changes of the world, material world, would be, uh, would be different in one occasion, in one period of the time, in one uh, place, in one place, would be different. Let's come to the Imam al-Mahdi, he is among us, he is living within, within us. We have many hadiths about that. But uh, as I promised, I don't like to, go, to discuss from the Hadith perspective. So how it come for him to be alive? How it come according to Imam of us, the first Abba Abdullah and the second Abba Abdullah, both of them confirming that he will appear in young form. So they, they say that not only you have you're not allowed to have a doubt about his life, but also you have to believe in his appearance in young form. So how is this possible? Quran says that it is not only possible, not only you're not allowed to ask, you have a, you need to have a doubt about it, but also it is the rule of the nature. So Imam al-Mahdi is living in the rule of the nature. We are unaware of the rule of the nature. We are evaluating the nature based on our fake, false rules and presumptions. That's why subhanallah, subhanallah, Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, you know, our Imams, the uh, 14 infallible rules and masumins, uh, are called, they have, everyone has his own certain title. For example, Imam Al-Kazim has the title of Al-Kadim. The eighth Imam of the Shia has the title of Ar-Rida. But none of them has the title of Imam Az-Zaman, Wali Al-Asr. The only Imam, is that he has the title of Imam of the time, the possessor of the Asr. I would like to talk about the, 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 the term Al Asr. There is difference between the term Al Daman, the time, and the Al Asr. Al Asr in Arab uh, in Arabic, when you, you want to get the juice, they call it Asiratul Anab, Asiratul Tufah, the juice of the apple. Juice of the grape. So, Asir Osara, when you compact something, when you made it in a nano way, when you made something in atomic way, so it would be Al Asir, Al Asr. So, one of the titles of the Imam Al Mahdi is Wali Al Asr. So he is not within the time. He is beyond the time. He is possessor of the time. And um, so we see that how it is possible for Imam Al Mahdi alayhi salam. His title is referring us to these two stories of the Quran and the uh, the 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 the. the uh, title and the let's say uh, the, the the saying of the both Abu Abdullah of the Shia Imam Al Sadr alayhi salam and Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam shows that how there is sync and coherence between the Quranic teachings and the the, the uh, Shia theology and the hadiths and the title of the Imam Al Mahdi alayhi salam. I don't like it. Uh, I don't know because the camera is far from me. I think it is almost uh, 30 minutes or more than that. So, brother, if I have a time, I can go ahead. Otherwise, we can hear from the brothers and sisters their questions. 
Yes, respected Sheikh. Yeah, you still have around, around five minutes. Bismillah. Bismillah. Still, I have five minutes. Yes, yes. Okay. So, I would like to um, still refer you, dear, dear brothers and sisters, to the meaning of the time in Quran. Time actually uh, in worldly life we can imagine the time time is not something a realistic thing time is something just to be uh, accepted based on the rules we have for example based on the lunar calendar one year is so many days but based on the uh, or solar calendar it is different so one year based on their understanding, one year based on our understanding is different. So it shows that year, the term year is not a really a realistic thing. Just it is uh, what we call it. Uh, I couldn't find a very um, uh, synonym word to that. It is based on the contract among the humanity. For example, some people said that 30 days would be a month. Why not 35 days? Why not 30, 45 days? And why one, 24 hours would be one day? Why not 25 days? Uh, why not 25 hours? Why 12 hours would be a half of the day? All of them is based on the contract and agreement among the human. That is not a realistic issue. That's why, subhanAllah, in Quran al Karim, when Quran used the term Yaw, Quran says that this is when you say, that's why I do believe that we are not allowed to translate the Yaw in Quran to the day. It has very different meaning. When Quran says that the Yaw in Quran, Quran says that just it is in worldly life, it has a meaning to you. But in the uh, metaphysical and realistic uh, life of the humanity, in the very nature of the, 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 the very reality of the nature of the creature, there is no time. That's why oh, in the hereafter, there is no day. When Quran says Yawm al Akhirah, it never means that there is the day, there is time in the hereafter. There is no time in hereafter. Why? Because before the hereafter is a Shamsa Kubra, is the Nujumun Kadara, Yoma Tubadalul Arz Ghair al Arz. When the moon is destroyed, the sun is destroyed, how you can provide a day? Because day is by the change of the earth. A uh, month is the, by the change of the moon. Year is the, by the change of the sun. When there is no sun, no moon, no earth, how you can find time? That's why in uh, not only in one place, in many places of Quran, Quran says that the one day of the Yawm al is more Khamsina uh, al sana five thousand years. So Quran says that time is a relevant issue. Do not imagine the other realities based on the time of your pre-assumptions. So one of the problem among us is that we are evaluating, counting the others based on the time we have in our mind. That's why we are counting the life of Imam al-Mahdi. Really, I dislike that. It is written in some places that it is the life of Imam al-Mahdi is 1,000 years and so, so. No, never. Life of Imam al-Mahdi based on our pre-assumption is so. Based on realistic of his life. Maybe it is one day. So... Regardless to uh, to story of the Quran, the other teachings of the Quran re regarding the philosophy of time and ontological study of the time from the Quranic perspective 
and philosophical perspective, it shows that how the life of the Imam al-Mahdi not only is possible, but also it is rule of the nature. We have to, maybe in the future, many would understand that it is very possible. And on that time, not only the human being will ask about the possibility of the life of the Imam al-Mahdi, but also they will, they will ask why we have the limit time. Why we have such a three assumptions. In the very beginning of the discussion, I mentioned that some of the questions regarding the life of the Imam al-Mahdi they are not actually the very question. They are related to time, to the area we are living. In the uh, first century of the Imam al-Mahdi there was no question regarding to the, uh, there were no question regarding to the li uh, long life of Imam al-Mahdi but mostly uh, it was asked about the birth of him. But today, the question has been changed. You see how atmospheres, the time, the area we are living changes our questions. My prediction is that in the very future, when the sciences and the, uh, the, 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 the hidden knowledge of the Quran would be unveiled, the uh, future generation, never they ask about the possibility of the long life of the Imam al-Mahdi. They will ask about the why it is impossible, we can't leave. They change the question, they shift the question toward us, not toward the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. Thank you for the time and the opportunity. SubhanAllah, Hassan, thank you so much, dear respected um, Sheikh. Um, My pleasure. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you further for that very eye-opening and eloquent lecture. Um, they respected Sheikh. Um, before I ask the Sheikh for questions, um, our dear viewers, uh, I would like to remind you, please do feel free to send your questions in. This is the perfect time to ask our respected Sheikh um, any questions you have on the topic of the possibility of the long life of the Imam Zamana. Um, dear respected Sheikh, the first question we have is, people believe in the likes of Nabi Uzair being you know, paused for 100 years, like you mentioned, Ashab al Kahf for many thousands of years, um, the likes of Nabi Isa, Nabi Khidr, uh, even Nabi Nuh. But why is it when it comes to Imam al Zamana specifically, people have issues or problems? Actually, the reason is that well, one of them is because some people think that the, 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 the case of Imam al Mahdi salam, only is the case of the, a certain group of these uh, Muslims, only it is related to the Shia. That's why some, for example, they have tendency in their mind regarding to the Shia. They want to uh, actually uh, arouse such a questions in a way that to make some doubts in Shi'it belief. Of, or some who are not Muslims, they think that this is the Islamic belief. So they... Uh, uh, they expose such questions to make doubt in Islamic belief. Actually, um, the religious discussions, sectarianism discussions, inter and intra-Islamic world, they make such a uh, such a question. That's why we have the we have a rapid question regarding to the possibility of the long life of the Imam al Mahdi in comparison to the Hadrat Khadr They think that. That is not the case of the sectarian discussion. But they think that if we, uh, for example, uh, magnify this question of the possibility of the lack of life, some people, they lose their faith uh, to the Shiism. They lose their faith to the Islam. That is one uh, psychological, psychological reason regarding this issue. Second is that actually um, there is a story is in the history. Mm, and the, 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 the uh, Hadrat Khazr's life is not connected mostly to our belief, but Imam al-Mahdi's life and believing to Imam al-Mahdi is very present in our belief and in our Iman and in our daily lives. So that is from sheep. I'm, I was talking from the uh, one uh, from the, the external perspective, for those who uh, expose such questions, 
That is the reason. From inside perspective, from the believer's perspective, the, the case of Imam al-Bahdi is very connected to our life, very attached to our life. So that's why we have to know the reason. We have to find out. That is, uh, but you know, for example, uh, whether to know the uh, uh, Hadrat Khazr is alive or not, maybe it never makes more sense to us. Actually, I'm not accepting this. From my perspective, we have to know the life of the Hadrat Khazr salam. Still, we can learn from him. As Musa salam went to him and asked, Okay, respect the shake. Um, you, you're, you've gone on mute. Sorry, shake. You're on mute. Sorry, yeah. We cut off when you mentioned about um, the importance of Nabi Khidr and Prophet Musa going voice. to him. I don't have your voice. So, if you could carry on from the part where you mentioned um, Prophet uh, Musa going to Prophet Khidr, why it's so voice. important. Now we can. Hear. Now we can. Hear. Bismillah. But I don't have your voice. So, uh, from perspective, from sheet perspective, it is uh, another reason. So, um, uh, in brief, to sum up, why the question regarding to the life of the Imam al Mahdi is more rapid and more asked in Sorry, shake that again. Um, it's gone on mute again. Sincere apologies. Sorry. Okay, so uh, there, uh, it has actually, we can say that uh, there, it has two reasons. One is from external side, they want to be uh, just, the, their purpose is to make doubt in the faith, uh, faith of the Muslims and Shia believers and followers um, uh, to have a doubt in their faith. And from religious perspective, from internal perspective, because the, 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 the existence of Imam Salam is very attached to our life, we have to know that. Hassan, thank you for that eloquent reply, Sheikh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, once more, I would like to request um, our dear brothers and sisters watching that please feel free to send in your questions, and inshallah, we can ask them to our respected scholar. Um, there, Sheikh, the next question we have is what is some of the hikmah or the wisdom? behind the long life of Imam Zamana. Someone is muting you, I don't know why. Can you hear me now, Sheikh? Okay. So the next question, Sheikh, we have is, what are some of the wisdoms or hikmah behind the long life of Imam Zamana? I can't hear you. Sorry. I think we're having some technical difficulties. Um... Can you hear me now, Shake? Is it coming through? Perhaps it's 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 the signal or yes, hearing you. Okay. Thank you, Shake. Um, thank you once more. The next question we have is, what are some of the wisdoms behind the long life of Imam Zamana? And you, I know you mentioned some of them, but. Um, living in the 21st century, what's some of the wisdom behind the long life of our Imam? You know, um, uh, theologian, particularly Shia ulamas, they, uh, they um, actually uh, they mention some of the reasons behind that. Uh, and um, the main reason by the Sheikh Mufid, he says that actually he is not in the occultation. We are in the occultation. I would like to uh, elaborate his teaching because till now, some people explained it in this way that oh, we are in, in a way that we, uh, we uh, are not able to touch Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. But I would like to talk from the perspective I discussed. Maybe the, 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 the intention of Sheikh Mufid by this great praise is that Imam is not in the way. We are in the veil of our pre-assumptions. Our pre-assumptions never allow us to touch Imam. Because 
when you have this pre-assumption that everything should be in the base of our pre-assumptions, based on the time we are living, they have to have the same time. You can't accept it. You have to be in the level of the Hadrat Uzair to know that the time could be different. You have to be in the level of the people of the cave to know that the world could be different in, from different angles in the same period. So the teaching, you know, I think one uh, uh, actually, instead of saying that there is a wisdom behind this, I would like to say that the very philosophy behind this, this is that Allah, Allah the Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wanted to unveil the rule of the nature to me. To people to know that nature is more wider than our understanding. The time is very issue, we have to know that. Otherwise, we can't understand the, the, the Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam. So, the case of Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam, the hikmah. The hikmah beyond this is to teach to the humanity that still nature has many rules from physical and ontological perspective, we are unaware of that. If we know these rules, we will understand the Imam Allah. That's why, uh, dear brother, I would like to uh, refer to hadith that it is said that uh, just some portion of knowledge, very less than 10% of knowledge would be uh, reached by the humanity. The rest of more than 90% of knowledge would be unwell at the time of the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. It shows that sometimes we are evaluating the creature. We are elaborating the rules of the creature based on very lack knowledge we have. That is only less than 10%. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, dear respect to Sheikh, for that very profound answer. Um, indeed, it has a lot of meanings to it. Um, I think this is the last question, um, Sheikh. Right. Um, Would you unmute yourself? Uh, sorry. Can you hear us now, Sheikh? Is it coming through? No? We recite a salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil fajr. Sheikh, can you hear us now? I think we're experiencing again some connection issues. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Now I'm hearing you. My okay. my eyes is on the microphone. I'm afraid of the being muted. Okay. Um, Sheikh, the next question. I think this is the final question we have time for, is regarding the rape of the Sughra, where Imam Zamana had four deputies. But now in his major occupation and his long life, is it possible to gain access to him? Um, or is it something that, you know, someone should just have sabr or patience over? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know, that uh, uh, to have connection to Imam al-Mahdi is very possible. Uh, um, based on, I'm talking from Quranic perspective. Uh, and also the stories narrated in the history it shows that many people had the connection with the Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. But problem is the way. Way. And this way, it is not only a religious issue. Sometimes we think that it is a religious issue. If you purify yourself, if you pray, if you uh, fast, if you be a good believer, only you have, can access to Imam al-Mahdi. Then, a person, uh, some people say that we did too much. Why we are uh, not access to Imam Al Mahdi? I want to say that it is one way to have access to Imam Al Mahdi. The second is that, from ontological perspective, you have to go beyond the time. When you live in this worldly limited life, you're not flying beyond this world limited life, you can't have access to 
Problem is that still we all living in cave. We never know that what is going to be changed surrounding us. And some people, they are living in the village of the Raqim, of the people of the cave. They are unaware what is going on in the cave. Problem is something unseen way. This unseen way is not only an ethical issue, but also is an ontological issue. What I do mean by that, I mean that we human beings, we are limited with this worldly physical life. We have to go beyond this physical life. That's why we have the hadith of the Imam Ali alayhi salam, mutu qabla an tamutu. It never means that kill yourself, die before your death. It means that you have to ascend yourself beyond this limited life. If we do that, we can depart beyond this life, as our prophet did in the, in the night of Asra. And also, the Hadrat Khaz who was living. Why Musa alayhi salam, he had access to the Hadrat Khaz? We, or I don't have. The reason is he went beyond this limited, a uh, limit and worldly life. And thank you so much, uh, the respected Sheikh. Um, I wish we could go on for more and more, mashallah. Um, I've certainly learned a lot in this session. Thank you so much. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further bless you and your family. We also would like to thank Islamic Centre of England for hosting such sessions for our dear brothers and sisters, uh, respected brothers and sisters. That's all the time we have for, for today. Uh, we would like to request you um, to remember us in your prayers. Inshallah, you are all in our prayers. And we end by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease and hasten the reappearance of our Imam. And like the Sheikh mentioned, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to gain the basira, to gain the connectivity, to gain the true ma'rifah of the Imam of our time and to be amongst his Ansar and his helpers. We would like to take your leave. Inshallah, until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.